Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the channel. Now, if you're new here, here we talk about hardcover comic books, manga, and movies. We review them, talk about them. If that sounds like your bag, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way, I'll keep you notified on your feed every time a new video drops. And for the returning members, y'all know what's up, man. Thanks for the support. Thanks for checking out the video. We appreciate it. And now, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about Michael Turner's Creations. It's a big hardcover. Comes with a slip case, a dust jacket, the whole nine yards, right? So you're not going to be able to read these stories in any better format. This is the premium format you're going to find. So the point of this video is um, this book is a little harder to find nowadays to, and your local comic shops and so forth. So you probably your best bet is probably going to be online. And now online, you just get one picture and so forth. So the video will hopefully give you all the information you're going to need so that you can make a more informative decision whether you want to purchase the book or not, right? Because, you know, you're dropping quite a few dollars on it. So uh, let's get to talk about the book itself. All right, so let's get to the dimensions of the book a little. This is with the slipcase. It's about 12 and a half inches tall and eight and a half inches wide. Your typical Marvel DC oversized hardcover are 11 inches tall. So just to give you a rough idea of the size difference. Now the slipcase itself, it, it's I love the design on it. It has uh, it says Michael Turner's creation. It's embossed letters, very cool throwback to the 90s, which is when Fathom made it made its bones, right? And it's embossed. Now here this picture you get, this is like a collage from Michael Turner. That's what will be in the dust jacket. Now, if you bought it from the Kickstarter back when it when it originally came out, there was a few different dust jackets you could choose from. So what are you gonna get in this book? You're gonna get Fathom. The 1998 series, which was the top selling comic for that whole year, uh, in case you weren't aware. Now, back in 98, comics weren't doing so hot, the sales weren't that great, but still, it was a top book and it was a new series, right? So, that's you know, nothing to sneeze at. His second series, Soul Fire, which is the first 12 issues, and another little mini series called Echoes. Fathom has 14 issues. Now, it gets interesting with the Fathom stuff because the last few issues. It had a crossover with Witchblade and Tomb Raider, which were also characters from Top Cow at the time. And those characters are not in this book. So they retold those last few issues. They retold the story and left those characters out of it. So if you want uh, those original single issues with the characters in it, you would have to buy the singles because they can't reprint them because, you know, licensing reasons. Now, what you are going to get in here, though, is uh, two new stories that are not uh, in single issues, right? So that's pretty cool. Now, let's check out the spine. Here's the spine, Michael Turner Creations. Pretty cool Aspen Comics logo here, which was uh, when Michael Turner left Top Cow, wanted to create his own imprint, which was um, Aspen. The first series was with Top Cow, though, the first Fathom series, which is the good one. It's the best one, and it's the one you're going to get in this book. Now, there's the back. Some more Michael Turner art, some info right here, and so forth, right? The logo, the this thing. So let's get to the book itself. We've seen enough about the dust jacket. Let's get to the book. All right, now there's a few things here I did not like. I wasn't a big fan of. They didn't deter me from buying the book, but there are things you might want to know because they might be a bigger deal to you than they are for me. They might be, you know, a game changer. It might be the difference between wanting to buy the book and not wanting to buy the book. First, the dust jacket, like I said, it's the picture you saw earlier. Here's the spine. Here's the back. It's a gorgeous dust jacket. I like it, but... The thing with this is that, check it out, the dust jacket, it just has a big collage. It's, it's a nice picture, but check it out. But when you put it on your bookshelf, look at that. You don't get the title. I almost wish this art was on the actual book and this was on the dust jacket. Reason being, that way we would get this. The title right that way when i put it in the bookshelf i know what book i'm grabbing right what i'm reaching for it's done real nice again with the blue foil this is not embossed but it still looks good here you get the blue foil again michael turner and that's the back pretty plain now let's flip through the pages a little bit all right let's get into the book a little bit that was one of my nitpicks was that spine and the binding is this is the inner pages the inner cover it's purple 
it's nice thick pages if you own the dc uh, absolute or a dark horse library edition you know what you're getting as far as the build pretty much except this is just bigger it's a lot thicker now one thing i didn't like also was the table of contents um here you get the issues and it's not even just the issues that are in this book it just shows the whole reading order of fathom so it's including all this other stuff that's not even in this book and it just tells you where these fit in it, it gets kind of weird i did not enjoy this and then here some nice artwork right here of the three series it's fathom this is uh soul fire and this is echoes so they all kind of have like a very tribal type look to them which i enjoy this this is one of the main things you buy the book for this is michael turner you get some it's like a, a little minor biography get a little bit about his life before he died which he died way too young by the way for real man um he had uh he, he was already real famous and he wasn't around that long but yeah he got sick and so forth and and i haven't honestly i haven't read all this stuff yet but uh, i've seen like a documentary though on youtube and i imagine it's gonna be a lot of the same stuff here you know his love for for uh artwork but he was never really into superheroes so he didn't know much about him. Like he, he knew who Batman and Spider-Man and them were. But he didn't know what, what are their trolls. What's their thing right and the stories. So he liked to draw. And he liked to create his own characters. And here another thing is. um So that that's probably the best uh, part of the book. That you're not going to get on your single issues right. Now here it shows the Phantom Prelude. And you get this little cover. You don't get the whole big cover. Which is fine. It's not a big deal to me. Now, what I don't like is when you get further in the book, like here you get the prelude, right? The nice, gorgeous two-page spread. Check out the dolphins and her swimming with them. That's nice right there. But but look at this. Let's get to here again. Now you get to the preview. Again, you get a, the cover. This was a two-page uh, thing. So you get the cover to the next issue. You know the preview starting. I wish if they kept doing this, I would have been fine with it. One thing I didn't like is once you get to the next issue, say one issue ends, the next issue just starts like this. It doesn't tell you the chapter ended. It doesn't tell you you're starting a new issue. It doesn't let you know any of that. And I was not a fan of that. I like having covers or at least having something that lets me know one issue has ended and one has started. So those are the big uh, issues I had with the book myself. Uh, it's something you might want to know. It's something that uh, for you guys might be a, a decision maker, right? So. Now let's flip through a few of the pages. This is Fathom. She's a marine biologist. She's always liked the water and so forth, right? So she's always liked the water. She never knew why. She's like, I've always been attracted to the water. So when I grew up, I became a marine biologist to explore, uh, know more about the deep, right? About the ocean and so forth. You know, they wear these fancy suits here. She's always been infatuated with that. Come to find out she's not quite a human. She's like half human, half not human. Uh, she's Tinka, Aquaman, Neymar, those characters. So she's from the ocean and there's a whole nother race down there, right? The basics, what you need to know is that there's two races, one below and one above. And it gets to a point where the two races or the two countries, if you will, get, go at odds, right? Uh, they start uh, on the verge of war, basically. And that's where the story goes. And it's... Uh, here you see the... And here you see the characters here with the, the characters designs they have. It's very much like Witchblade. Now you got to remember, Michael Turner designed and drew Witchblade. That's where he started. So when he drew these characters, his own characters he created, the, the costumes are very similar, right, to the Witchblade ones, which they're not my favorite, and a lot of people get turned off by these costumes. And I can see why. I, I definitely can see it. Now, for me, that's why I didn't read this book for a long time. But once I did... It's it's a good story. So it's great art. I mean, look at this. Very sexy. Very Melrose Place. 90210. Definitely has some of that without being gratuitous, though. I, I feel like it's done elegantly. Now, this one has a cover, but this is the only one that has a cover. After this, there's no more covers. Another great uh, artwork right there. The last one is just to show you this from here forward. This material will be covered on a book that looks like this. It's a big trade that's called the Definitive Edition. Now here she is. Um, this is a story where she's uh, like the origin, right? Where she's coming back from the ocean. They found her after like 
years. This guy found her, got uh, cause this boat, it went missing years ago in the ocean, and all of a sudden it came back. It appeared. People thought all those people were missing and dead, right? It came back and she was in it. Now we don't know what happened to her during that time the boat was missing, and uh, that's where you that's where where the story starts, right? And and again, I want you to read it so you can know what happened to her and how she got her powers and and all that jazz. Here's the Marines from the, the U.S. Air Force and so forth. Obviously, like I said, they're gonna start going to war with the land uh, with the water people. They're called the Blue here. We call them the Blue. Now, um, I like the art, the whole Air Force scenes and so forth. You watch Top Gun, you know what I'm talking about, or or you like Star Wars, the Rogue Squadron. You're gonna get some of that right here, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm digging it. Now oh, the gorgeous panel. Two page spread right there. Look at that. Look at that. I love this guy's artwork. Now look at the way he draws the legs. They're very almost like Gumby. You know what I mean? Like they're longer than they should be. The anatomy, right? But it's comics, you know. He's not going for a realistic style. He's going for an extreme, flamboyant, eye attention grabbing type of uh style, right? And it worked because we all know who he is and he has a big fan base. People buy his com uh, comics just based on on having his art on the cover. So that's how you know you're big time already, right? Your art sells the book, you know what I mean? I remember people say uh, art sells the book and uh, writing keeps the, the buyer coming back. And I think that this, that sounds about right. So here's the two races. These are the villains and this guy, he's kind of like a protector. He's been following her around, seeing how she blends in with the humans. She's following around, seeing how she blends in with the humans and... And this guy's trying to corrupt her and uh, he's like lying to her and bending stuff to get her to hate humans for no reason, basically. And uh, at first she can maybe be a little gullible and fall for it. And this guy's here to kind of, you know, let her know what's going on, that, that she's being manipulated and so forth. Okay, now let's get to the next story. This is all fathoms, quite a bit of fathom. Love these covers as well. These covers are from the trade paperbacks. This is from the first trade, which is the material you'll find here. This is from the second series and the third, which that material is not in this book. I wish this whole book was Fathom, to be honest with you. But the other series, it was not Michael Turner on art anymore. So this is uh, uh, artist-centric or creator-centric, if you will. Look at this. I hadn't even seen this page. I haven't read the whole book. I just uh, had it there since I read some of this stuff already. I haven't bothered to open it up. Now the second, yeah, I really like this page, man. Now the second series is called Soul Fire. Haven't read it. Uh, it's it seems like it's kind of like uh, your fantasy type stuff, like with wizards and and stuff like that. And uh, it has like a tribes, like your, I wouldn't say Apaches and Mayans and Aztecs and all that, but it gave me that feel based on the way their costumes were. You know, this guy's like a knight. I can't speak too much about this story because I haven't read it. I haven't read this one or the other series, The Arrows. Oh, that's a nice cover though. I'm, a, I'm gonna have to buy these books, these trades. I know they have trades. I'm gonna have to buy them and see how I like them. If It's a win-win for me because even if I don't like the stories, I know I'm gonna enjoy his art. So, Oh, look at this. Look at this dragon. That, that looks nice. Look at the coloring. He's... One panel here, he's shooting somewhere else. And that looks real nice. Let's see if there's anything at the end. I want this video to dry too long. Oh, this young couple in love right there. That's the last series. Oh, here at the end, you get all the covers at the end. But you get them small like this. You get one full cover, that's two issue one. Yeah, so you do get the covers at the end. That's cool, we we'll at least have them, but I like having them where they go. Great covers, great covers. Look at this one. That one looks real like majestic to me. Real nice. Like this one too. Oh, that's one looks man, I, 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 a lot of great covers here.
this one looks nice too. The majority of these covers can be posters in your room somewhere because they look that great. So people think it's just about a girl and her surfboard. It's There's a lot more to it than that. It's very Aquaman-like. I don't read a lot of uh, Submariner or Aquaman because this is what I was reading, right? When it came to the to choose one of the three, like as far as for a, a water-type creature, I went with this one. And I figured with this one, it's less bogged down with continuity and so forth. It maybe pick up three or four trades and you're all cut up, right? At the time when this was coming out, there was a lot of uh, new superheroes being created. And a uh, heavy dose of them, I would say there was more female superheroes being created than men. And uh, some people like to hate on this era. And, and now when they create women superheroes, oh, we're so proud and so forth, right? And when they were doing it, like they tried to go out of the way not to give them credit when this era was doing it first, right? They, they were doing all that stuff. And they weren't told to, they were creating those characters themselves for, with their own um, imprint, their own publishing. So they were doing this stuff first. Of course, to get it to sell, they have to give them um, questionable costumes sometimes, right? And that's where a lot of the problem and the critique comes from. Because of the costumes, they assume they're one type of book. But when you read them, they're very well written. A lot of these are very well written. And, and I'm guilty of that myself where I saw the way they draw them. I'm like, I kind of know what it's going to be. And then it's something completely different. They're uh, strong female characters written correctly, just like the guy characters. Uh, people need to give those books a chance. The dialogue sometimes can be, it's like when you read Stan Lee from back in the 60s, in the, uh, it, it seems outdated now. This, or Chris, Chris uh, Claremont, this stuff, when you read it, sometimes the dialogue can be like too much dialogue, like when you don't need as much. Uh, that's my only issue with the experience when you're reading it. Compared to the new way that they write books, it's so decompressed and uh, you get the same amount of dialogue in six issues that you would get in one of these probably. Okay guys, um, I guess that's all I got for you guys today. I Hopefully you enjoyed this video, you hit that like button and I hope this helped you out for any questions you had. If there's something I didn't cover, go ahead in the comment section and let me know what it was and I'll answer it to the best of my abilities. Other than that, I'll check you guys out next time.